There's still no word on whether or not match play will return to Tucson, but after the golf we witnessed today, it just might have to. Golf and a little bit of drama collided this weekend at the Players' Championship. Sergio Garcia made it clear once again that Tiger Woods isn't his favorite guy. Number one seeds, who needs them when you had matchups like we did today? So tea time was supposed to be 8.30 this morning to resume play. That didn't happen till 1 p.m., but hey, weather conditions, they were good today, cooperating. Players were just anxious to get out there on the greens. There was a record low nine upsets yesterday in the first round of Accenture match play. But today, like you said, three number one seeds going down. But the fans that I talked to today said they're just happy that their favorites are moving on. Arizona grad Jim Furyk was one of eight today fighting for a spot to move on to the semifinals on Sunday. The U of A grad would be playing in the quarterfinals for the first time in match play. She spends a lot of time training here in Tucson. We'd like to introduce you to professional golfer. I love that. Do you love hearing <laughs> I love it, yeah. Mackenzie Jackson. There was plenty of Cardinal Red and Navy sporting around here this week, and you can thank Jim Furyk for that. Furyk will be facing the 14th seed, Ricky Fowler. Now, when I spoke to Fowler after his round today, he said he is fully aware of the fan support that Furyk has here, but he kind of smirked and joked and said, hey, I think I have some fans here myself. We are live at Dove Mountain. Kayla Anderson, KGUN 9 Sports. Hannah Pearson is only four years old, and golf is her hobby of choice. When I was a baby, I, I was one year old, and I had plastic golf clubs. Those plastic clubs were actually a gift from her parents. Hannah's father, Carl, says from the minute she put the club in her hand, he knew she had a special gift. Her first shot she took, the hand-to-eye coordination was fantastic. My wife and I looked at each other and we went, oh my God. In just two years, Hannah's golf game has reached a whole new level. Along with coaches Michael and Shelly Haywood, Kent Chase also plays a hand in her improvement. My gosh, what a gifted little person to learn how to do things correctly. He tells her something once and she just seems to pick it up. She just, she just gets it. With her bag in tote and her clubs just about as tall as she is, Hannah is certainly turning some heads. One time a person was driving and tripping and putting uh -huh. and then they stopped right here to look at my swing. It is quite impressive. In fact, she just took home the title of best peewee swing and finished fourth overall in her very first tournament held in San Diego this past week. There's apparently gifts in the world mm -hmm. and Hannah's got a gift. She's certainly the one to watch out for as her journey is just beginning. Reporting in Tucson, Kayla Anderson, KGA 9 Sports. Well, hey, Guy and Stella, as you can see behind me, things pretty much wrapping up for the night here at Dove Mountain. Now, March Madness is just a few weeks away, but here in the golf world, they call this February frenzy. 32 players battle it out to move on to the round of 16 tomorrow. But let's talk about some of the matchups that we saw today. There were some interesting ones, and... Let's talk about number 14 seed Ricky Fowler. Kind of a surprise. He hasn't made it out of the first round of Accenture match play in two years. He upset the six seed Jimmy Walker to move on to Friday. But there were also some outcomes that were expected. Number three seed Bubba Watson defeated his opponent Jonas Blix two up. Watson is on a roll, of course, after winning the Northern Trust Open this past week. And you can't forget about the Tucson favorite, Arizona grad Jim Furyk. He came back to beat Charles Schwartzel three and two. Furyk has not made it out of the second round since 2009, so a lot of fans happy about that. Did want to update you, the number one seed Rory McIlroy did fall today in a playoff against Harris English, so he is now out. Coming up at six, we'll talk about really what it means to be an underdog and what it means to be a favorite. Live at Dove Mountain, Kayla Anderson, KGUN 9 Sports. Everybody loves the underdog, even in golf. I'm an underdog guy. I like, I like rooting for the underdogs. Are you an underdog guy? Do you root for those lower seeds? Uh, it depends on who the person is. I definitely root for Ricky. And speaking of Ricky Fowler, he was the 14 seed coming into today, but he found a way to pull off the upset win over the six seed Jimmy Walker. So it feels good, you know, nice to move on to the Sweet 16, uh, beat two great players, one guy who's the best player in the world at the moment, and Ian Poulter, who's probably one of the best uh, match play players there is.
But it wasn't all about the underdog. There were some top seeds that just weren't going down, and the fans were fine with that too. I just love watching him hit the ball. Bubba Watson continues to handle his opponents, defeating the 11 seed Jonas Blix two up. You know, it's always just good to get past, get past one round. So underdog or not, in match play, it's all about survival of the fittest, and at this point, let the best man win. Everybody in the top 100 in the world, top 200 in the world can, can win at any moment, so it really doesn't matter what the seed is. There's still no word on whether or not match play will return to Tucson, but after the golf we witnessed today, it just might have to. This morning, Jason Day defeated Ricky Fowler in the semifinals, and Victor de Busson beat Ernie Els. So it would be the Australian Day taking on the Frenchman de Busson in the final. Day would actually be three up through 12, but de Busson comes back at the 17th, where he had to make the birdie to keep it going. And he does. Day is only one up. To the 18th we go. It didn't look good for the Frenchman. But then he does this. The bunker shot gets up, curves just right within four feet of the hole. So Day with the par putt for the win. That's all he would have to do. But he misses it. And Dibusan wins the hole. We're all square. We go to extra holes at the 19th. Dibus on second shot. He's right next to the Choya Cactus. Oh, he just went out of hit. Are you are what? What? Oh my goodness. What a shot. That would help him have the hole. We aren't finished yet. 20th hole. Dibus on in the hazard again. Not looking good, but Colin Golden hands it lands within five feet from the hole. Are you kidding me? He has a hole to stay alive. Tom Watson tweeted out two of the best ups and downs I have ever seen. But the Frenchman's luck would run out finally at the 23rd day. All he needed was the four foot birdie to go in. And it does. Jason Day defeats Victor de Busson to take home the match play championship. Jason Day. You know, for a second there, I didn't think I was, it was my time again. You know, it was, I've, I've really, I honestly thought that, you know, maybe I, you know, just got to keep fighting and fighting and fighting. And, you know, with the two shots that he hit on one and then on nine in the, in the extra holes was just unbelievable. You know, but I just stuck with it and I said, you know, I just tried to visualize, visualize myself with the, the Walter Hagen Cup, you know, last night and just said, how much do you want it? I kept on telling myself I want it more than anything in the world. It's been 30 years since Heather Drew graduated from the U of A. Nine on your side's Kayla Anderson reports that her career has been as unpredictable as the disease in which she was diagnosed. Heather Drew's swing looks much like it did 30 years ago, but the path back to competing on tour hasn't been so smooth. The Arizona grad joined the LPGA Tour in 1983, spending more than a decade as one of golf's elite players. I loved play, being in different places on a weekly basis, uh, playing with some of the greats in the game. But in the prime of her career, she had to retire from the game she loved. What happened when you knew that something was not going right with, with your body at that time? Well, I'd already had a, a previous experience uh, with a problem. The problem was neurological. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. I couldn't even hold a pencil or a pen, let alone swing a golf club. The disease slowed Heather down, but didn't defeat her. I wasn't going to give up, and I think that uh, by nature I am a fighter. Determined as ever, Heather returned to the course not as a player, but as a caddy. Did you learn anything when you were a caddy that was different from when you were actually golfing? Yes, a lot. I learned a lot about myself. I was kind of a hothead, uh -huh. and uh, as being on the other side of the bag, I saw how self-defeating that was. Now healthy enough to be competing again, Heather is part of this week's Fry's Desert Classic on the Legends Tour, playing the game that helped her battle her disease. If you have a passion and you and you love something like I love this, uh, it makes having MS a lot easier. In Tucson, Kayla Anderson, 9 on your side, sports.